It's been a week of new signings for Brian Talbot in addition to the purchase of Steve Berry. Well, I say purchase, he was brought in on a free transfer from Stevenage Borough. Brian Talbot has drafted in on loan until the end of the season, a player who played 11 times for Rushden last season. Guy Branston, who's come in to do a job, presumably in the heart of the defence because of the Diamonds injury worries of late. He goes straight in to partner Chris White and Jim Rodwell. The only other change in the Diamonds lineup from the side that drew two all against Dover in the week is the uh, relegation of Tim Wooding to the bench. In comes John Hampshire instead. Well, Morecambe, as I say, having a pretty dismal time of it. Only two goals in their last nine games, despite the presence of number 10 there, John Norman, who is second joint top scorer in the conference this season with 16 goals. Also playing for Morecambe today is number four, Kenny Mayers, who was sent off when these two sides met at Nen Park in the conference back in October. That was a game that Rushden won 3-1. And the same sort of result today for Brian Talbot's side would do very nicely, I'm sure. But Morecambe need the points just as much. Brady will take it. Plenty up there. Brady's delivery is a good one. Run well! Totally unmarked. And Rushden have a perfect start at Christie Park. They're a goal to the good on five minutes. And Jim Rodwell gets his second of the season and he loves it. Well, what on earth was happening in the Morecambe defence? Brady's free kick was straightforward. Jim Rodwell, the most surprised man in the ground to find himself totally unmarked. And a straightforward header past Andy Banks and the Diamonds have the lead. And we've only had five and a half minutes. Well, that's Underwood and Branston getting a bit of a mix. But what a start. Well, Jim Rodwell's been one of the most unlikely success stories of this season for Rosden and Diamonds. And amidst the injuries that have recently befallen Warburton and uh, Bradshaw, Rodwell's still there. Hamish's cross in. Collins is there. Cooper. A chance for Cooper. He's turned and he's scored. And Rosden have a 2 0 lead on 26 minutes. It's Mark Cooper with his second goal in as many games and he is turning into an unlikely source of goals for the Diamonds of late. This is his fourth of the season. He scored with a tremendous free kick against Dover in the week and he's repeated the trick here because from Hampshire's ball in, Morgan players were falling over all over the show. Cooper capitalised and a clinical finish has doubled Rushden's lead. Well, dare I say it, Rushden aren't the most impressive team in sitting on a lead in the conference this season. You only have to cast your minds back to Tuesday night when they were 2-0 up against Dover to uh, know of Rushden's uh, failings when it comes to shutting up shop. Foster spreads a nice ball to Collins. Dover, of course, drew eventually at Nen Park on Tuesday. McElhatton. Oh, Hampshire's dummy. And the ball was on its way to Foster, but credit the interception there from Paul Rushden. First half. White heads this one away, though. And Cooper completes the clearance. Driven back in though by Greg Brown. And a chance for Mayers. Smith comes to the Diamonds rescue again. McKerney's corner. And once again a bit of confusion in the Rushden box. But that's half time. The Diamonds have never won at Christie Park. But they won't have a better chance than they have today. Because they're two goals up at the halfway stage. Jim Rodwell and Mark Cooper scoring and Morecambe have now not scored in five and a half games of football. Join us for the second half. Morecambe last scored a goal in the football conference on the 30th of January when Dave McKerney got one here in a one-all draw against Yeovil Town. They had their chances in the first half, particularly when John Norman headed a Darren Lyons free kick onto the bar. Oh well, Mark Cooper slipped there and it's let in Drummond. Oh, there's a good chance here for the home side. This is Lyons and at last Morecambe have their first goal in five and a half matches. It's taken them a little over 20 seconds at the start of this second half against Rushden to get on the score sheet, but they've now half the Diamonds lead and what a second half we're set up for now. Nice finish by Lyons, a tidy little flick past Smith. Although the chance came about because Mark Cooper slipped in midfield, led in Drummond. His ball allowed the, uh, the chance for Lyons and a cool finish has made things very interesting at Christie Park now. We know all about the Diamonds fallibilities when they're uh, one or even two goals to the good. Well, Rodwell trying to advance with the ball there. The player on the ground for Morecambe was Gardner. Now Foster. 
he wants a free kick as well but doesn't get it lifted forward by Rushton Rodwell and Gardner challenging the free kick goes Morecambe's way and the home side are packing the box with red shirts Gardner will take it Norman they've done it Morecambe have come back from two down like Dover Athletic did in midweek and after being two goals up for the second game in succession Rushton and Diamonds have now got to fight to get a winner and the home side have gone mental and no wonder because today they haven't scored in well over 500 minutes of football but from that free kick from Gardner Norman has leapt superbly to knock a head up past Mark Smith his 17th goal of the season and a dejected Adrian Foster is being replaced by Miquel de Souza well that's a change we've been become used to in recent games de Souza brought on to bring a bit of pace into the Diamonds attack late on but Morecambe have now scored more than one goal in a conference match for the first time since the very first game of the year, the 2nd of January, when uh, Northwich Victoria were beaten 3-1 here. Well, that's Hampshire. Now Brady. Hampshire. Oh, what a chance for Collins. Rushden possibly getting desperate. Like against Dover in midweek, when it seemed that three points were a certainty, it looks like the Diamonds might have to settle for just one and be thankful for that because it could so easily have been Morecambe 3, Diamonds 2 by now. Dave Gardner missing what was clearly the most clear-cut chance of the game in this second half for Morecambe. D'Souza. That's going to go behind for a Rushden corner. And is there going to be one last throw of the dice? Two minutes to go. Rushton have a corner. Two all at Christie Park. Cooper. Back to Butterworth. Everyone up there for the Diamond still. This is Branston. And McElhatton! He's done it! Rushton have gone and snatched it with two minutes to go. And Michael McElhatton has scored what could turn out to be one of the most important goals of the season. That is how much it means to the Diamonds players and fans. Well, Morecambe failed to clear that corner and they've been made to pay for it because in that scramble on the edge of the box, McElhatton has stuck out a leg and prodded an unstoppable shot there past Andy Banks and Rushden have snatched it at the end. Well, Takano on the break for Morecambe now. Brady in front of him. And is there going to be a more dramatic end? Smith has dropped it. And there nearly was. Butterworth hacks clear and tremendous drama in the closing stages at Christie Park and it looks like for all their fight backs Morecambe are going to end up with nothing today well they don't Rushden and Diamonds leave Christie Park with all three points in a gripping conference encounter and Diamonds players all over the pitch have fallen to their knees because they know they've been in one hell of a battle this afternoon that's Mark Cooper he scored on 26 minutes to give the Diamonds a 2-0 lead but after that, Darren Lyons right at the start of the second half and then John Norman pulled it back to two all. But then right at the death when it looked like the Diamonds had pushed the self-destruct button again, Michael McElhatton scored the winner.